I have another in sight. You shouldn't stay in there. That's it. That's the place. Fill in the hole. Bury them all. I should buy the fort a little time. Let's hope it's not too late for the famous Mrs. Priest. I wonder how many there are in the fort. If you were by the day, I'll wager. Still, better to be inside than out. That would explain why they haven't returned.
Something's here. Hidden. Is it just me or...? I felt it too. I feel something close.
This one's not been dead long. Mm. Let's hope he stays that way. Looks like they were taken by surprise. Can you find a way around the locked door? Did we miss a few?
My bolt is shot! Behind you! Watch out, Spectre position. A timely arrival. You'll be Haskell's banishers. Thank you. Thank you both. You can see me. Clear as day, just as I can see. This is my husband. I am Helen Priest. And Thea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McGraith. It is rare that the living can see the lingering dead. All I know is one day I woke after seven long years of grief, and my Sebastian was back. It was as if my prayers had at last been answered. That was enough for me. In times of danger, I am duty-bound to protect the woman I love. You understand? Seven years. Why come back now? It did not feel like seven years. Suddenly... I felt her pain calling to me. Divine intervention or otherwise, all that matters is that my dear Sebastian is back. Now, when I need him most. We found the rest of your men outside. They're gone. I'm sorry. We were overrun. I sent Matthews and Williams with the supplies to race for the hoist. This was a risky expedition. But Helen had no choice. If the survivors were to rely on Pennington alone, the fort would have already fallen. I suspect that's so. Sometimes difficult choices must be made. That's courage. All the courage in the world will be worthless if those in command won't match it. Pennington did this while monsters relentless besieged the fort. But make no mistake, these men's deaths are on the captain's conscience. If he has one. How so? Seven years ago, a plague came to New Eden. Pennington quarantined the sick in the mines, walled them up. They were dark times. Hard times. None knew what the morrow would bring. We all lost much. Too much. As second in command, Sebastian volunteered to stay. Walled in with the others, he held out the longest. He died a hero. And now the Forsaken are rising. They demand revenge. Who would blame them? 
I watched them die. Soldiers and miners, sick and hungry, begging for help they knew would never come. Captain Pennington has much blood on his hands. Pennington can't have taken his decision lightly. It must have been hard on all involved. Is it harder, to your mind, to send someone to their death than it is to do the dying? We should get back to the fort. We will escort you. I'm afraid I locked us in when I broke the latch. If there's a way out, we'll find it. Lock looks broken. I doubt that gate will ever open again. Quite something. I saw her. Just the help. A banisher marched with my father's infantry. Good for morale, he said. Soldiers usually carry their ghosts with them. War is good for our business. I take it that's how you met. I know a soldier when I see him fight. I never worked for the army, but something like that. sympathy. Why did you follow him? I followed his reputation, but he's no longer the same man. What would you do in his place? I'm doing it. He sits behind his walls waiting for them to fall, and I'm out here fighting to live. We're fighting for our lives. The captain is in the way. These internal conflicts are a risk for the stability of the fort. A necessary risk for the survival of all. But I agree. This must end. You may leave the crates. I'll send someone back for them. Yeah, the path should be quiet. We cleared the area of the Spectre's Nest. Well, that's a relief. Follow me. Go talk to Pennington. Make him understand, if you can. Where can I find him? He hides in his office. I'll find him there. Where are the others? Huh? Williams and the other chap. Matthews. 
We were ambushed. They found us. May God have mercy on their souls. Requires a key. Storeroom. Locked. How often, Abigail, must we have this fight? How often must we argue? We shall argue until you hear me. I hear you all too well. I hear a hoggish harrigan, a narrow nag, a selfish shrew. One of these days, I shall poison your soup. And the day before, I'll take you to the highest cliff and push you off it. A store. Fernando's? Closed. Are we in the right place? Anyone home? No one. Papers in Miller's name. We're in the right place. Keep looking. He's organized. Disorganized traders lose money. Father reads English extensively. Well, nobody's perfect. He's making protective amulets. He's making useless trinkets. And he works hard to keep it away. What is he afraid of? What don't we know? Let's search the store. What is this? A sansa. It's a musical instrument. It's Bantu, from Southern Africa.
Please excuse my husband. He really is as unpleasant as he sounds. And who are you, then? At Red McCraith, ma'am. I'm a banisher. Are you, indeed. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Banisher. I'm Abigail Rumble. Thanks to you, me and my husband should soon be able to go back to our mountains. Anything talk-worthy round these parts? Ferdinando Miller has been the talk of the town lately. He has had much good fortune, and many resent him for it. I like the lad. He's polite, helpful, listens to his customers. He deserves no backbiting. Helen Priest seems to get the work done. The captain trusts her with his life. So do I. John adores her. When the fort was attacked, she proved us right. I like having a strong woman in charge. What's your thoughts on Pennington? A good leader? He gave John a job. That was good. We hadn't worked since we left the Bly place. He saw John's promise and gave him his chance. I. I'd say he's a good leader. Your husband won't mind us talking. No. Why would he? We are faithful and trustworthy. As, I'm sure, are you. She doubts your intentions. No need to worry about me, ma'am. I'm spoken for. Good. We understand one another. My husband and I are very close. Very close indeed. Then you have my admiration. Sustaining such closeness takes much tolerance and hard work. You don't know how good you've got it. You and your husband prefer an isolated life outside the fort. I have a roof above my head. My belly is rarely empty and I live by my beliefs. We suffered for many years. By comparison, this is bliss. Do not find it dangerous out here. Just the two of you alone. I thank you for your concern, but we live how we live, and it makes us quite contented. I'll let you get back to your day, madam. If you need anything, feel free to ask. Surprisingly high quality wares. Can't be many like. He's doing surprisingly well for himself. Where did he get the inventory? Rebecca's will. She was rich. She left him a lot. That's where he got the inventory. No. The list matches his sales record. Touch my money and I'll drop you. What are you doing here? Thieving, no doubt. I'm no thief, Mr. Miller. I'm the Banisher. I brought Helen Priest back to the fort. A Banisher? Thieves lie. How do you know my name? It is my business to know. Red McCraith. If you are a banisher of ghosts, I have business for you. I'll pay. I spoke to Rebecca. Tis she who haunts you. She sent me to find you. She worries for you. Says she loves you. The English have a word for that. Hogshite. not for love, why did she bequeath you her fortune? Whichever. It matters not. You're a banisher. It is your job to get rid of her. Can you not just do your work? Easy, Mr. Miller. Now, I'll need to examine Rebecca's belongings. I sold them. All of them. 
You did? To who? I don't know. People. I wrote it down. In the register. Read it, if you wish. Two recent sales to the blacksmith and to Ingersoll's store. A storekeeper hears much. What do you hear, Mr. Miller? I'm a busy man. If you've a question to ask, then ask it. How are things in the fort, by your estimation? Look around you. Things are desperate. Have you heard the sound of their bodies crashing against the wood? I am a man of courage. I have endured much. But this... It undoes me. I don't know what you people have done to this country. But there's little hope. And no way out. What think you of Helen Priest? I don't think of Helen Priest. I stay out of her way. I hope she'll stay out of mine. What can you tell me about Captain Pennington? He has no problem with me. I have no problem with him. He respected Rebecca's wishes. He gave me what was mine. My freedom. Her estate. He saw me as a man and signed the papers to say so. And when them who saw different complained, he laid down the law. Your stuff looks good. Let's trade. Now, my friend, we are conversing. You've put quite the effort into protecting your home, haven't you? You poked about my house without my say-so. I know my business. So out of generosity, here's the truth. None of it works. Not the wreath, not the amulet. None of it works. Pretty, though. His brooch is working. It works. She hasn't come back. I can sleep now. I hear her calling, whispering my name. I wait to find her at my bedside. Her eyes meet. She stares. She won't leave me alone. She's an Akishi. A demon. Banish her. I'll pay you. I need a job. I accept. Farewell to you, Mr. Miller, sir. You know where to find me. If you're buying, I'm selling. He'd sold it all, everything she'd owned, and fast. Is he wiping the slate clean and moving on? If we track her things down, perhaps they'll tell us. It's locked. There must be a key. <laughs> now, Mr. Peabody, I shall drain the first boil. Ready? Same sudden question every sudden time. No, I'm not done well ready. Excellent. Then we'll begin. Be careful, God darn it! Careful! Ah! I know. I know. Shh. Are those your records? Yes. Perhaps someday they may help someone. Have the supplies you need. 
I can treat a cough, perhaps cool a fever. Mr. Peabody needs more than calamine. But what he needs is not available and we must accept it. My apologies. I did not wish to hush you. I just prefer to focus on one patient at a time. Welcome to the infirmary. I'm Nurse Wings. Anne, if it sets you at ease. I'm a banisher. Name's McCraith, but you may call me Red. Red. A pleasure to see a friendly face, or any face at all. What can I do for you? So, how'd you end up here? What brought you to nursing? That, sir, is a personal question. I'm a personable man. That's not the same thing. I was sick as a child. Very sick. Afterwards, I swore I'd serve others when they were sick. And here I am. What about you? I fell in love with a banisher. One of the best. Spent the happiest years of my life with her. And where are they now? Antea died in the meeting house in New Eden Town. Ah, that was you. I should have known. I'm so very sorry for your loss, Red. So very sorry. Times being as they are, how come you only have the one patient? Mr. Peabody's illness is unsightly. Fort Jericho has a history of contagion. Folk worry. What does he have? Not my place to say. You'll have to ask him yourself. All right. I'll not press you. Did you not fear infection? If I did, I would not show it. What's the word around here? I don't see folk much. I stay here, keep to myself. No visitors? No other patients? Helen Preeze comes when she can. Captain Pennington would sometimes visit Mr. Peabody, but I haven't seen him in a while now. What can you tell me about Captain Pennington? He fought King Philip and the Wampanoag. Led his company well, I'm told. It's not for me to like or dislike him, unpleasant though he may be. Tell me about Helen Priest. The bold lieutenant's widow. He's dead some years now, and she's not remarried. She's as much a soldier as her husband was. A fighter. Commanding, too. Even dead, you can see his influence in her bearing. I think I know how that feels. What about you? How do you feel? Oh, I'm alive and well. I'll not complain. I can be strong for those less fortunate. You're a good soul, Nurse Wings. Well, I do my best, Mr. McCraith. I'm sure you do yours. Farewell, Nurse Wings. Farewell, and good health, sir. Oh, there are you, Queen Mary Stuart. Well, I've met Mary the Second, and she's a little prettier than I. I'm Red McCraith. I'm a banisher. Ah, the banisher come to gloat at sick old Cotton Peabody. Well, piss off. There's a sudden stink of death in here, Scotsman, and it ain't from me. Where did you fight, soldier? None of your business, Scotsman. This comrade is mine. No one wants to talk to you. <laughs> you're no soldier. You're a brawler and a rebel. And if you fought at all, I'll wager you lost. I'm a proper soldier, me. Self-made, too. Left the family farm and signed up to fight them Indians. I learned the hard way in the blood and the snow. Fought under the captain himself, I did. And followed him here and joined the train band. When did you get sick? What's it to you? I'm not so sick as I can't give some nosy Scotsman what for. 
When I'm sick, I get surly too. What's the word around here? No one tattles to me stuck in here. Captain came by once, worried for Andrew White. Seems the old boy screams in his sleep. Well, there's a lot of it about. White's a gate guard, right? What's his story? He sees ghosts in his sleep. He's dreaming. Real ghosts come when you're awake. Tell me about the captain. Speak freely, I'll not get back to him. Let it get back to him. The captain is the best of us, and I'm proud to serve him. Proud, too, to give him my guidance when he'd call. Not that he calls no more. Suppose he has too much on his plate. Time's precious for the likes of the captain, eh? You tell me about Helen Priest. I promise it won't get back to her. Lieutenant's wife. Stood second to the captain herself. Now she's in command. Quiet the rise, no? How's life about the fort? What do you want to hear? It's cold. We're hungry. Welcome to paradise. As you were, Mr. Peabody. See you about. Not like I can go anywhere anyways. Mr. McRaith, what can I do for you? I'm just passing through, Mrs. Rumble. I'll let you get back to your day, madam. If you need anything, feel free to ask. Captain Bennington. No time. No way out. No hope. No way in. No time. No time at all. Captain Bennington, sir. Mr. McRaith, you live. There's work to be done. Work? You had work, a mission. To bring one last glimmer of hope, to gladden our hearts before the pit takes us all. You secretive bastards haven't helped. The job is done. There's no more hope and little enough time. All that remains is the pit. Welcome to the last stand, McGrath. Welcome to the end. I wouldn't surrender just yet, Captain. I found Helen Priest. We brought supplies. A waste of effort on both accounts. Hardly. We saved a life. Resupplied, you may save more. For the sake of what? For the sake of days? A week, perhaps? You save no one. You prolong the terror. The dead will come. Our throats will feel their bony fingers soon enough. The end is inevitable. It is if you will not act. You're the officer. Take command. Surely you can't intend to do nothing. You sound like Priest. She has changed. 
Her return to Fort Jericho has made her impulsive, irrational, quarrelsome. I believe she did not fully grieve her husband's loss. Returning to the scene has, it seems, reopened the wound. It festers. She'll join the lieutenant soon enough. When our defences crumble at the last, the pit shall take us all. Fair to say your tactical retreat from New Eden Town has not served you. The town was doomed to fall to the curse. We disagreed on everything. There was nothing left to do but leave. We did not know there'd be no escape. No Smith gathered the board and the governor let the affair flock to him. We never agreed on anything in the first place. The new Smiths are holed up in the woods, planning soon to leave for Boston. <laughs> they may leave for Boston, but the curse will follow. The curse will follow until their backs are against the wall. As the commanding officer, you must know all the local lumps and bumps. The lumps and bumps can smooth themselves. I have other priorities. Tell me more about yourself and your career. I did my duty and had the fortune to return alive. That's all. We who are intimate with war tell no tales. I thought that too. I was wrong. Silence allowed my ghosts to prosper. It is good to tell our stories. If ever I do tell, I'll not be telling you, son. Why did you come to New Eden, Captain? Why here? Far from the many wars we fight, you mean? I'd shot enough Frenchmen and more than enough Indians. Did no one come with you? Keep to your business, son, not mine. It's just there's a portrait hanging on the wall. A family. I had a wife and daughter once. Once. I'll not entertain you with their story. How do things stand, Captain, as you see them? Uh, little has changed. The dead flood from the mines. We shoot them down and gain respite. Soon, the onslaught begins anew. The clock of our extinction ticks on towards the hour. We may no more defeat the dead than we may vanquish the ocean waves. Folk have little enough hope, and you're leading them further into the darkness. I've heard the whispers, the murmurs, the plotting from the shadows. We owe to the last. We resist, till retribution rises from the pit and drags us all to hell. Well, that's something worth waiting for. I fail to see the appeal of this slow agony. How unfortunate. Because thanks to you, and the time you bought us, the agony will be all the slower. Permission to take my leave, Captain. And if I refuse it? Are you trying to recruit me, Captain? Do you really think I'd take the King's shilling? <laughs> If I were to offer enough shillings, I'm sure of it. I need no new lieutenants. But if you wish, you may stay. This key unlocks the unused watchtower. You'll build it while you're here. <laughs> 